and welcome to Round Robin. I'm your host, Robin McCormick with the City of Hampton. And today we are going to talk about safety in your home, safety in your neighborhood, and working in conjunction with the Hampton Police Department. My guest is Colgan Wilson, who is the Neighborhood Watch Coordinator. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You know, I think safety is the number one issue on our citizens' minds right now. You know, we hear it over and over. We know that there's been a small uptick in crime. We know that there's a lot less violent crime than there was three years ago, four years ago, and certainly historically, but we see it and I think we hear it more now because media, social, is, media. social yeah. media is everything and because frankly you all are much more transparent and and you put everything out on the website, everything out on Facebook, media picks it up, repeats it in that 24 hour news right. cycle and so we hear everything. But what is really going on out there and how can we um, work with you to make us more safe? <laughs> A big, that's a lot. That's a big we'll question. start yeah. at the beginning. I'm very sorry. <coughs> um, what is going on out there? What are you seeing? So obviously we've had this uptick in violent crime uh, this year. Uh, let's put that to the side right now. And a lot of because the, a lot of it is bad guy against bad guy. A lot and, of it and is bad guy against bad guy. Uh, directly affecting the general right. population and, and hate, as I, much. I, it I hate, can, but it's not been the major. And I hate to say bad guy against bad guy. Uh, because but, we'd like for everyone to be safe. Right, but the, the trend is is the people uh, doing the violent crime know the people um, who they are committing it against. So not to say it's bad guy against right, bad right. guy, but they, there's a knowledge of each other, and it's not random citizens mostly. It's not uh, people going to the grocery store mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. as much as it is, I know you, I want to commit a crime against you. Right. Um, so that, that put that to the side. Uh, but. Most of the crime we're seeing right now are thefts, um, larceny from vehicles, burglaries. Um, obviously, this time of the year with uh, tax preparations coming, tax frauds, and all that good stuff, uh, but mostly larcenies. Either. And, and it scares people, and it creates a feeling, a, a perception of mm -hmm. a lack of safety if something gets taken out of my car, which right. you know I've heard in my neighborhood, I've heard in a lot of neighborhoods. And, and what I like to focus on is perception. My perception of crime in the city of Hampton is one thing because I know more, I see more, and you know, I'm a police officer, I know, you know how to deal, uh, how to protect myself a little differently than others. But your perception of crime in a neighborhood is what's important. And that's what we're trying to get uh, people to realize is, is you need to tell us your perception of crime. Mm -hmm. Because I can try to work on what I believe is your neighborhood problem, but if I don't work on what you believe is your neighborhood problem, right. do you feel safe? So if I come into your neighborhood and I look at my stats and say, well, it looks like you have uh, A, B, and C is your problem, and, but you believe D, E, and F is your problem, and I don't fix D, E, and F. Right you're not going to feel safe. So mostly right now is what we're seeing that uh, uh, communities are having an issue with larcenies and thefts. Uh, even communities that aren't used to having these crimes occur. Mm -hmm. um, so larceny of vehicles, first off. Uh, I think our stat says 40% of the vehicles gone into are because the car door is unlocked. The other uh, percentage is either people saying I don't remember or <laughs> that I locked them. Um, so that's still a high percentage of people who are leaving their vehicles unlocked. Now, not to say that you know we have criminals who are smart and maybe use a tool or, or something like that to get in their car, but we haven't seen that. We haven't really caught a lot oh, of people really? using these tools or using the um, you know, the old Jimmy to get into the door. Most of it is. It needs to take a while, even if you're good. Because uh, I blocked my child in the car one time. They're loud. <laughs> I mean, you have to sit there and, and work at it. Yeah, and, and they're going to go for the easy stuff. They're going to go. They're, they're stealing change, electronics, anything they can see. So what we're asking people to do is one, lock your doors. I, if, if you see my Facebook Live videos, you've probably heard me say lock your door ten thousand times. But lock your doors. But it's not doors. really getting through, is it? Because I mean, that is a big. It, it's a yeah. It's it's if still. If forty percent of those doors are unlocked, we can fix that part. Right. You cannot. That's right. I mean, right. you can find the people who are taking advantage of us, mm -hmm. but still, we can do some things. That's right. To make so, ourselves safer. Locking your door uh, is the biggest thing, uh, but on top of that, removing items from your vehicle. Take that 
that opportunity away from the criminal. That's the only thing we can do to stop crime is reduce the amount of opportunities we provide to them. So reduce it by locking your door, reduce it by taking in your uh, valuables or hiding your valuables in the car so if I look into it, I can't see them. And if I, you know, do all that and my car or my neighbor's cars are the first ones to get hit in the neighborhood and they can't get into them, they're more than likely to leave. So, uh, you know, the, the perception of, okay, these people are locking their doors. I mean, the criminals have that perception. Okay, I've tried four cars, they're all locked. I'm gonna go try a different neighborhood. They usually don't stick around when they realize they can't get in. So me locking my car door doesn't just protect me, it protects my neighbors it, it, as well. It could well. protect your neighbors we as well. We can Absolutely. together dissuade people. That's right. So Interesting, doing, I hadn't thought of it that way. Know, doing those things, you know, criminals like easy money, easy work. You know, that's why they're in the uh, the, the crime that's game right. to begin with, right? Yeah, I mean, that's a good it's, point. it's easier than uh, uh, getting easier a job. Easier than a day job, right. Easier than a day job. And um, we have to make their job as hard as we possibly can. And they're easy steps for us. But uh, even cops, you know, we're supposed to be the, the role models for this. We even, you know, we forget. It's it's common knowledge. It's common sense. However, we it, we slip. Everybody slips, we get it. We just want to keep reminding you guys, us, to do these things. Okay. To, you know, I don't want to be the guy who keeps bugging people, but that's what I feel like, you know, <laughs> lock your door, lock your door, lock your door, but it's just, a, it's just a reminder, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So property theft, what about uh, burglaries, home? Uh, burglaries, um, most burglaries happen during the day. And the Most same of thing. Most of us are working. Most of us are working. They're looking for an easy in, uh, unlocked windows, unlocked doors. Uh, they don't want to be seen. So if your bushes are overgrown or you have trees overgrown in the front yard or uh, a privacy fence, a lot of us have privacy fences, that all adds to the burglar's decision to um, hit your home. You know, can people see me from the front? Can people see me from the back? Um, are there lights on? Are there lights off? Can I tell if someone's home or not? That's the biggest thing. When done, it, when um, I just read a study on the biggest thing burglars or the biggest deterrent for a burglar is it, and that is they believe someone's home because they don't want to break into your home when you're in there because that's right. Not their, that's not what they want. Uh, they want that easy in and out. So if you can make someone believe you're home either with leaving a TV on or uh, lights on in your home and change them Lights going the day, on or off, yeah. Uh, either on timers or with our phones now. I mean, you can get the Wi-Fi lights, oh, light can, switch. Right. Uh, Philip Hugh makes a really great one that you plug into the wall and you can be on your phone and turn your lights on and off. Uh, cameras uh, are a big deterrent. They see that there are, there are cameras on you know, or cameras out front or, you know, home protected by ADT, you know, that kind of deal. That, mm -hmm. That's a deterrent because um, it increases the risk of them getting caught. Gotcha. So reduce the opportunity for them uh, doing it and increase their risk and, and you'll see a decrease and burglaries. And there are a lot. I mean, I haven't kept up with all the technology, but there are a lot of technologies now mm -hmm. where you don't have to contract with a security company, right. but where you can have, you know, cameras or other kinds oh, yeah. of things yeah. that you control yourself. Um, and, and I know a lot of people actually who, who've been getting those. You can go to any big box store, BJ's, Costco, Sam's Club, and they have cameras for half the price that they used to be five years ago. Mm -hmm. So you can get four cameras and a one terabyte hard drive uh, and the smartphone capability for five, six hundred dollars. Yeah. And you may spend that much uh, in a year and getting a, you know, something else. So there's a, a range of options there's we're saying. You can do things options. less expensively, mm -hmm. you can do things more expensively, whatever works yep. for you, but take mm -hmm. those steps That's right. to um, to try to protect yourself. Mm -hmm. Some of it's, as you say, small. Like You're making sure your bushes are trimmed. Outside lights, right. motion detector lights, all those things. What, what I tell my neighborhood watch groups is set aside a fund every year, uh, put a little bit in, uh, whatever you're willing to um, save, 
50 bucks, 100 bucks, and put it into account and once a year do an upgrade to your home, either with motion lights or upgrading your door locks, uh, upgrading your exterior or interior lights or buying this, these camera systems and just save, save that little bit of money to do a home improvement. Mm -hmm. um, and that really adds, one, to the value of your home, two, to the, how safe you feel in your home. And it could be a, a $50 motion sensor light that you've saved up, you know, six, seven months to get. Right. And, you know, that's not a bad purchase. That's a really good crime prevention tool. Okay, so what we've talked about so far is how we can protect ourselves. Right. What kind of measures we can take as individuals. But that puts us in this little individual bubble. Mm -hmm. And to really make a difference, we need to work with our neighbors. That's right. And we need to work with you. So... The biggest thing is communities working within themselves. Uh, we've seen a, I will say, I've seen a decrease in my 15 years here of how neighbors interact with each other. I don't know if it's the age of technology or the, yeah, uh, I don't know, uh, either. you know, people throughout this millennials uh, deal, but neighbors aren't talking to neighbors. Um, and that's a big deal. If I live next to Robin and I don't know Robin and I ignore everything that goes on in Robin's life uh, and then I see somebody that's at her house that may be unfamiliar, do I, do I call the police? Probably not because I don't know Robin. That could be Robin's friend, right? Right, right. But if I know Robin and I see somebody unfamiliar at her house. And if I know Robin's away for the weekend and I know because Robin's we were away chatting. For, that's okay. right. Then I feel more comfortable to go, that's not normal. I should call, mm -hmm. and we don't see that. Um, I, 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 there's an example of a neighborhood, and this is a recent, during the summer, we had an increase of burglaries off of Big Bethel Road, and um, one of the very first burglaries, three people saw it and did not call. Wow. Uh, the first guy said, it was none of my business. Second guy said, and this is an issue we've been having, well, they were young black males. I didn't feel comfortable calling on a young black male because I didn't want to seem racist. You don't want to stereotype. I don't Absolutely. want to stereotype. And then the other guy said, well, I caught it on my video, but I was just waiting for somebody to come to see if I needed that video. They needed that video. And that group of uh, juveniles ended up breaking into several other houses in that area. That being the first one, we could have... We could have ended it right there. And we're talking six, seven burglaries later, I believe it was, uh, throughout the summer. And so that neighborhood wanted to start a neighborhood watch. And I said, great, let's do it. And I told the story of, hey, y'all had a burglar in your neighborhood, and this is what happened. And they, one guy raised his hand and goes, I'd like to apologize. I was the guy who thought it was none of my business. Wow. And it really changed his way of thinking because he goes, I work nights. I was about to take my shower, and I, you know, so I didn't know these kids. I don't really know my neighbor that well. I figure, whatever, it's none of my business. And I took my shower and went to bed. Well, you know. So one of the things that Neighborhood Watch does is you make us talk to each other. Yes, that's the goal. <laughs> that's really sad that's, that we need an outside person yeah. to come in and say, here's your neighbor, here's shake neighbor, their shake hand, hand, talk to right. them. That's, that's um, kind of sad. It is sad, and you could, we, we have it as Neighborhood Watch, but you could name it anything. Well, you could go to your Neighborhood I mean, Association meetings you if could, you have them, which essentially you know, they're the a same, lot of people don't Essentially, do. they're the same thing. We just name it Neighborhood Watch, and other people, it's a civic league or an association, and, mm -hmm. and they, they do essentially the same job, and that job is to, to talk to each other uh, and then to talk to us, um, and that's the biggest thing. Even some neighbors will talk to each other, but they don't share the information with us, and that doesn't do us any good, Right. Uh, and that's the big thing. Even if you are talking, you need to share that information with me or the police department, mm -hmm. and because we adjust our patrol based on our call volume. So if I have one call from a neighborhood, are we going to send a lot of officers there? Probably ah. not. But if we have 25 calls from that neighborhood, are we going to pay more attention to that? Gotcha. It's kind of like your kid in the, in, her, you know, in the bedroom at night going, Mom, and she only yells Mom once, and you wait to see. <laughs> Like, well, she's eh, serious. I can get past this, right? Okay, she didn't say anything else. I'm going back to bed. Or if you hear her going, Mom, 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 
mom, we go, right? Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. Squeaky wheel gets the grease. And that's not a. And that's not this one person calling no, 25 no. times. Let's be clear. I need 25 people <laughs> that's calling. That's not helpful. Yeah, I need 25 people calling. So if there's a street light out, I want everybody who sees that street light out, call. Call 311. You know, here's one where social media hurts us too because I, I, I do know a lot of my neighbors from the neighborhood Facebook group, mm -hmm. yep. and I don't know them in person, but I know their profiles, we right. talk, you know, all that kind of stuff. But we also know that somebody's already called it in because it's on mm -hmm. Facebook. So we're like, cool, we don't, you know, they already know. Right. It didn't occur to me that you need to hear it from yeah. more than one person. Yeah, we need to hear it from more than one person. And, and we hear that a lot, you know. I saw it on Facebook, so I already knew. I knew it was, it was reported. I did that with Dominion. Uh, eh, we already reported it. Yeah, power outage, right? Oh, I mm -hmm. think someone already reported that power outage. Um, the biggest thing that happens with is gunshots. So one of uh, one of our other biggest complaints is the sound of gunshots at night or during the day in the city of Hampton. Um, and we asked, "Well, did you call?" And they go, "Well, no. I figured somebody down the street called." And they said, "Well, you, you won't find them anyway." That's what the people think. Right? We're just not going to find them anyway. But what happens if, if Robin calls and Robin's neighbor down the street calls and I call, we can actually triangulate based on your location. Based on who heard it. You know it what? It sounds like we it's, it's in this area. And very often we get that information. We go out there and we see, okay, look, we found a crime scene. We found shell casings. And those shell casings may not mean anything right then, but I can collect that shell casing and I have to send it to the lab. That lab keeps it. And if I pick up a gun somewhere down the line from somebody, that matches. And we might be able to solve two, two, two crimes. Right. Or if you find the same shell casings in different, this, locations, in different locations, you know what you're looking for. And we have a, a pattern. And we can say, okay, when we do find this gun, we can link all of these shootings to this, this firearm. So that's why it's, it's so important for people to call because... If one person calls, we may send one officer. He'll drive around, see if he can see anything, and then nothing's there because he it leaves. didn't happen there. Right. I heard it, but it wasn't right here. Right. Interesting. So, yeah. Okay. So, what makes someone start a neighborhood watch? And if they want to do it, what what do they need to do? So, we have roughly a hundred neighborhood watches. Um, they at, range at from various stages they, of involvement. I'm right. sure. Right. Yeah. Some are very active. Some are. I get a phone call every six minutes, you know, some I get a phone call once a year. Mm -hmm. um, but if you want to start a neighborhood watch, one, give me a call. 334-0836 um, is my phone number. You can call me. Um, we want about 10% of the neighborhood that you're working with. So if it's one block, then that one block, we want about 10%. So um, so it's probably easier to start on a smaller scale. It's much easier to start <laughs> on a smaller scale. Okay. Um, then we do an interest meeting. We go in there, we talk about Neighborhood Watch, what we want you to do. Your eyes and ears of our neighborhood. And we give the, you know, the spiel about Neighborhood Watch. And if they still want to do it, then we hold uh, about a, um, a series of three trainings, uh, about an hour each. Um, and that certifies you as a Neighborhood Watch. And that those trainings are reporting suspicious activity, Securing your home and your uh, personal safety and uh, police procedures. We let you know what we're, how we do, how we how work. How you do things. How we do okay. things. And so a longer version of what we've done here, kind of. Very much longer, yeah, much okay. longer. Yeah. More details. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we give you a sign and we put it up for you on a poll and you're a neighborhood watch. And what we expect from you is to call us with information. What you should expect from us is us calling you and giving you information. That's the biggest thing is we want to provide you with information. So if there was a shooting or a series of larcenies uh, in your neighborhood, we want you to know about it. And we try to provide as much as we can to you. Okay. And people also, I mean, you guys do some stuff on the Nextdoor app. Mm -hmm. I know people have, I mean, use social media as yes. a way of staying in touch. People need to to check on those apps. Nextdoor has really taken off as a neighborhood watch mm -hmm. app, more so than Facebook. Um, but both are both work. Right, but Facebook, I can't post in any <coughs> neighborhood but my own. That's right. But but Nextdoor, you guys can say, you know, post mm -hmm. this for people within a one mile radius. That's so right. it's it's a little broader communication. Right, right. And actually, I can be very specific with next door. Mm -hmm. I can say, I only want information to go to Old With, right. and I can send it to Old With. Vice, you know. Whereas you might not be on their neighborhood, one right. of their three <laughs> four neighborhood right. groups. Right. There's, there's, that's yeah. a challenging neighborhood yeah. right there. Yeah. 
So um, uh, another piece of social media that we want to push out is crimereports.com. And crimereports.com is an interactive Google map that every day at 2 a.m. all reports taken uh, are put on this map. So if you want to know the crime in your neighborhood, you can go to crimereports.com, put in your address, and you'll see a Google map with uh, icons on it. You can click on the icons, it'll show what the crime is, date, time, location, and what it was. So it keeps you up to date on what's actually going on in your neighborhood. And I do want to say, that's a .com, so it's a service, mm -hmm. but the way they get their data is you guys mm -hmm. post the data every day and then they manipulate it. Right. You can it, look raw at the data that yes. you guys post, but it's a whole lot easier when someone yes. writes a program that right. shows it on a map and, yeah. and things like that. Yeah, It comes straight from our computer system every day. We don't actually have to input it because it sucks it out. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. Mm -hmm. And that is part of this 21st century policing, yes, open data, mm -hmm. communication. I, I think it's really important for people to understand that it isn't just we expect you, the citizen, to call us. Mm -hmm. We're giving you. We the police is, is it's a two-way communication. That's right. that's right. And that's the only way we're going to solve criminals. Like It yeah. looks easier on TV because somehow they managed to get through the crime analysis and all the data analysis in like, I don't know, yeah, an 12 hour. minutes, yeah. you know, so it's all yeah. solved and the person's tried and behind bars. Not in real life, <coughs> I right? really wish real life was like <laughs> law and order, right? Yeah. One hour episodes, we're done, on to the next one. Right. Yeah. It's not like that. It's, it's a much lengthier process and citizens can shorten the process by offering tips. That's whatever right. Whatever they saw. That's right. Whatever they heard. We, our data comes from you. Our, our arrests come from your information. 96%, I believe, of all arrests made are because somebody called us and said, here's this information. And maybe you're not sure. Maybe you don't think it's helpful. Never hurts Never to hurts. provide the information. And a lot of people are scared to call us. They don't want to be retaliated against. Well, we provide you. You, you can call in. Uh, either number, the non-emergency 727-6111, or if you don't know that or you don't remember that, you can always dial 911. It's the same lady picking up the phone on the other end. She just picks up the one she faster. She just picks up <laughs> the one faster, and you can tell her this is not an emergency, and, but here's the information. I do not want an officer to come to my house, or I want an officer to come to my house. Or you could say, I would like the officer to not come to my house, but give me a phone call. Right. And, and we all have cell phones. Now. And, you know, we can get the information that way. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank I you. can talk more. <laughs> so maybe we'll have you come back sometime, but I think we need to wrap up for today. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you for watching. I hope that you will be involved, whether it's a formal neighborhood watch or whether you know your neighbor and his or her schedule and, and call the police if you see something that looks out of place. Because part of being a community is that we care about each other, we take care of each other, and we work with the police to help make our neighborhood and our entire city safer. Thanks for watching.